Thank, thanks for having me. I'm going to talk about uh, context, location, and value. Uh, a location largely because, um, both because uh, that's, that, that's what Alan was, uh, was going to be pr uh, presenting on, and, um, and, and location and uh, location-based services or location apps in the mobile sector are actually what I, um, what I ha have worked on for, for many years. Um, and, uh, and context, because, uh, because I think that's what makes the mobile most interesting. That, that, that's the most interesting part of mobile for me. Um, that uh, it's, what's, in, what's interesting about mobile is, is the mobility aspect. It's that we've got the devices with us all the time. And, and what that means is that we are, we're carrying them with us into different contexts. And so that has, there's all kinds of interesting implications there. But um, uh, what I mean by, I mean, con context, hopefully that's clear what that means. I mean, a, a context in today is that we're sitting in this room. There's, uh, and there's, it's, a, it's a sort of business conference kind of setting. And the way in which we use our device is different than it might be when we're sitting at our desk at the office or when we're, or when we're at home. So those, those contexts that we find ourselves in have a lot to do with, um, with location. Uh, it's not a, 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 like, context and location correlates very strongly. Um, that there are, that like context often depend on location. Um, the, the way that you use your phone in the office is, is, is largely because it's your office and because it's the place of the office. Um, but there are also situations where, uh, where context may not be related to location, and, 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 uh, and I'll mention that later on. So what I'm going to do today in the next uh, 20 minutes or so is just show you some of my favorite examples of the ways in which uh, a sort of new, uh, some, some recent apps and, and mobile projects are connecting the, the physical world and the virtual world through context. And then at the end, I'm going to talk, I'm, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll come back to value. So uh, I'll, I'll just say a little bit about me. Um, I'm a designer, developer, and producer, have been doing that work uh, on the web since the mid-90s. And I've been working for almost as long in mobile. Um, about 10, almost exactly 10 years ago, um, launched a, a location-based uh, storytelling project called Murmur, um, which um, did, uh, did a pretty good job of um, using the sort of new possibilities of, of uh, mobile technology, fairly lo-fi mobile technology in 2002 and three. More recently, my work has been in the realm of innovation strategy, and I'm approaching innovation from a design perspective, so innovation in terms of process. Um, and currently, I'm working in the uh, what uh, in OCAD's business incubator, which is called the Imagination Catalyst. When, when we're thinking about mobile from a technology perspective, um, it's really clear what is mobile and what's not. It's mobile if it's on a mobile device, something that's more portable than this. Um, something that you can hold in your hand easily. Um, whereas when we're looking at mobile from a context or from an experience perspective, that starts to get a bit fuzzier. There may be, there are probably lots of apps that you use on your mobile device, but you also use through the web on your desktop or through some other means. Um, and so for some, for some of my examples, all of my examples are related at some level to, to mobile in, in every sense. But um, but in some cases, what I'm going to be showing are uh, sort of promo videos or the, act or the conventional websites, um, because those, those might just present better. One of the apps in this or sort of like family of apps that got a lot of attention um, in 2012 were these mobile social discovery apps. These are, uh, these are ones that tap into your existing social networks, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, and um, help you not just find your friends, but also discover friends of friends. And a lot of it is based around um, is based around location. And so I uh, resisted for a long time, and I installed Highlight on my phone last night. And um, the uh, and and so what I'm getting now, uh, which I'm so far tolerating, are these notifications about, um, hey, there's this you know Tim is is like two blocks away, and you have one Facebook friend in common. So that's so then I, I you know, I'm able to like go in and look at Tim's profile and find out that doesn't seem really like we have that much in common. And I don't really care that he's a, 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 a block away from me. But in different contexts, that could be a whole different situation. I think especially, I mean, certainly if there's a, in, in a context where there's a very high level of usage in some cities, that may be the case. Um, this highlight was particularly 
there was a lot of buzz around it at South by Southwest last year where, there's, where there is that, it's, it's an opportunity to create this critical mass around a social app. Highlight does, in, a, in an interesting and maybe somewhat creepy way, um, uh, sh like connect that, the social, the, social, the mobile, and, and, the, and location uh, geography. You, you may have known Halo. It's, a, it's an app that, um, that had launched in Toronto at some time um, last year. Fairly simple. The idea is that what, what it's, the, the pain that they're addressing is um, sometimes it's hard to hail a cab. But at the same time, they're actually really, uh, what, one of the things that's really interesting is the way that they are interfacing with cab drivers. So um, it's often difficult for, according to this video, I don't, I don't know very many cab drivers personally, but uh, it's often hard, to, hard to, to efficiently find a fare as a cab driver. And so what Halo does is it's trying to connect these communities. Um, and uh, it's, you don't see it so much here, but their, their interface is one that, um, that's, that's quite compelling. I mean, in order to hail a cab, all, you don't need to know where the cabs are. It's helpful, but when you launch the app, it locates you on the map. It shows you where the Halo-enabled cabs are nearby. Um, and it gives you, a, and, it, and it'll give you a sort of an estimate of how long it would take for one of them to get to you, were you to, were you to request it. This is an app called Open Paths. Open Paths was created by a, some sort of artists and researchers um, who were interested and inspired a couple of years ago when there was this sort of scandal around how uh, the iPhones were unnoticed, unbeknownst to the user, collecting a log of your location. Um, and that was in a sort of hidden in a secret place on, on the iPhone um, that Apple could access, um, but it, you know, presumably no one, else, no one else was able to. It's, uh, it's a bit scary that, the, that your phone is, is keeping, uh, keeping track of where you are over time that Apple has access. Apple and, and hackers basically have access to that. Um, uh, wouldn't it be exciting if we made that, access, that data uh, actually available to the user? And so introducing this idea of first party data access, which I think is a really interesting concept. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a way that we're used to thinking about data that often, but it's, but it's one that's quite, that seems very compelling and important. Um, so uh, Apple uh, fixed that problem, um, making it no longer, either the phone no longer uh, track, keeps a log of your location, or if it does, it's doing it more, even more secretly than it did before. Um, but uh, so what those, what those folks did is they, uh, they decided that they would um, create an app that would help people, that, that would allow people to keep a, a log of where they go. And uh, why would you want a log of where you go? Well, that's not, that part, they, they don't try to answer that question. Um, they, uh, uh, but what, what, what they do point out when, if, when, they're, when you hear them speak is um, that there's something quite cool about um, watching the, the, about looking at that, looking at the data about uh, uh, that sort of location log that, that the phone can keep for you. And so I'll show you, um, because I haven't been anywhere uh, weird lately, I'll show you, I'll show you my, my log, um, which is of the past, I don't know, month or so. And uh, clearly I haven't been very far. I've had this running for, for a month or so on my phone and, um, you know, and it, uh, you can sort of zoom in and out and, it, and it, it'll kind of animate this. Now, this data is available for me. I can download it in Excel format and whatever else and um, uh, use it for whatever it is that I want to do. In, in, this, in essence, it's a bit of a, it's kind of a research tool. Um, but, uh, and it's also, it's, it's sort of kind of fun to watch. You can also get, do, get this on your phone, but it's a bit of a better experience when you're viewing this animation on the website. By looking at this data, by collecting this data and looking at this data over time, you can start to make certain uh, assumptions about um, uh, about my behavior. So you could, by looking, if you took the time to look at this, you could figure out where I live. You could figure out where I work. You could figure out, you could, you could take a guess about where my girlfriend lives. Um, and you could, you, and, and, and some of my friends who I've visited over the, over the, past, over the past few weeks. Uh, what bars I hang out at, stuff like that, right? You can start to, you can start to make all kinds of assumptions um, about this that could be really valuable. Um, certainly for marketers, but also for, for, other, for other purposes as well. Um, and, uh, and in fact, that is what, um, what is what's happening um, uh, with um, this app called Google Now, which is essentially Google's or Android's answer to Siri. Uh, the gist of this is um, that 
Uh, Google, Google is collecting this. It, 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 it's an opt-in. Um, when you've got whatever version of Android this runs on, it explicitly asks you, it tells you what it's doing, and it asks you for, for your permission to let it do that. Um, but um, it looks at your location. It, it, look, it watches your email. It watches your calendar. And, and the, reason, the reason it's doing this is it's, try, it's trying to be helpful. Um, it's trying to anticipate uh, what kinds of things you might need to do and, uh, and, and to deliver that information proactively to you. So for example, uh, it's 5 o'clock, you're at work, you're probably going home. Like it, it, you know, you're very likely going home. And so it, it'll, it'll tell you what the, what the, state, the state of, of traffic is, how, how, long, how long you might expect the drive home to take. Things like sports, other stuff. Um, so uh, again, there's, uh, there's the creep factor here. Um, but, um, but certainly some interesting possibilities around um, what this, um, uh, the ways in which that data is being mined and turned into something valuable for us. Uh, what the trade-off is is, is is definitely a discussion worth having, um, but that's something, something that's interesting that's going on. On this, on this question of value, I think you know, this is an interesting case because, because Google is trying to, is trying to mine my data uh, and turn it into, and, and in order to present something, sort of a, a novel kind of value to me. Um, and that's very, that like takes an enormous amount, this, at least today, takes an enormous amount of, of uh, research and effort to, to do that. Uh, Google has the capacity to do it, not, not that many. Um, uh, other companies do, in part because they may not have the same access to my data that Google that Google does.